Hello, good morning. This is the video for the week 4 for the third grade. Buenos días. Este es el video de la semana 4 de trabajo para el grupo de tercer grado. El día de hoy vamos a continuar con los cuentos que hemos estado revisando. Vamos a continuar con las partes del libro y vamos a tener algunas actividades utilizando no solo las partes de o elementos de la historia, también vamos a hablar un poquito de adjetivos y vamos a practicarlos poquito a poquito conforme los videos. Recuerden que al final yo les explico todas las actividades, ¿de acuerdo? Aquí seguimos. Hola, and I'm going to be your English teacher for this class. On previous classes, we have been working with the stories and its parts. I'm pretty sure you have enjoyed them and learned a lot from them. Today, we are going to talk about story element. We have the title, which is the name of the book. The characters are people or animals in the story. The plot are the events in the story divided into three parts, beginning, middle, and the end. The beginning is where the story introduces the setting, characters, and the problem. The middle is where the story tells how the characters react to the problem. The end is where the story usually solves the problem. Now, let's go to take a look at the next example. Be ready because I'm going to ask for your help. I'm sure we all know the story Little Red Riding Hood. Am I right? Good. Can you tell me who are the characters from the story? Correct. Little Red Riding Hood, Grandmother, The Wolf, and The Huntsman. Now, another easy question for you. Can you tell me what is the setting of the story? That's right. It's the forest and grandmother's house. I'm going to help you with the plot of the story. The beginning is when Little Red Riding Hood wants to visit her grandmother. The middle is when she meets the wolf who eats her and her grandmother. The end is when the huntsman saves Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother. Then they punish the wolf and live happily ever after. Do you remember the name of the story from your previous classes? Think just a little bit. That's right. It was Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, in your notebooks, you will draw a chart like the one you see here. And using the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you will write the title of the story. Then, draw the characters, the setting, and the plot of the story. Thank you for your attention. You did an excellent job. Goodbye. work with the story of Goldilocks. We have worked also with the parts of the story and one of the important things about every story is that it has characters. So what are the characters? Well the characters can be people as you, as your mom, as your dad. They can also be animals, like the pets you have at home, and they also can be things, like your books, your colors, your toys, and the stuff you take to school. So what happens when we want to describe one of the characters of our stories? We use adjectives. Adjectives are used to describe the characters. We can use colors, for example, red, blue, yellow, brown, or whatever color you like. We can also use sizes to say how big or small someone or something is. For example, daddy bear is big and baby bear is small. We can also use complexions to describe a character. 
Complexion describes the body structure. For example, fat as Daddy Bear is, or thin as Goldilocks is. Now, let's practice with a quiz time. Okay, here we have Daddy Bear. Do you remember him? First, can you tell me what color is his fur? Is it red? Is it blue? Or is it brown? Take your time to remember. If you choose brown, you are correct. Excellent. Now, next question is, what is his size? Remember him? Remember how he is? Now, is he big or is he small? Take your time. Ready? If you choose big, you are correct. Great job. Now, let's talk about his complexion. Do you remember? Can you tell me what is his complexion? Is he thin or is he fat? Think about it. If you choose fat, you are correct. Excellent job. Thank you, everyone. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye. My name is Eunice. Today, I'm going to be your English teacher. Did you like the stories of Golden Logs and the Three Bears and Little Red Riding Hood? What was your favorite? I like those two. Today, we are going to learn about the relative pronouns. A relative pronoun refers to a noun mentioned previously. They can be used to join two sentences. The most common are, repeat with me, that, who, which, whose, that, who, which, whose, that, it is just for people, animals, or things. This is the hunter that rescued them. The three bears that went out to the forest. The largest bed that is too hard. Who? It is used for people. She is the girl who ate baby bear's food. Which? It is used for animals or things. This is the chair which Goldilocks broke. The wolf which dresses up as a granny. Whose? It is used to describe possession. She visited her grandmother whose house is near the forest. Activity. Relative pronouns. Match with the line the relative pronouns with information written in the boxes. Which. It is used for animals or things. Who. It is used for people. Whose. It is used to describe possession. That. It is used for people, animals, or things. Very good! Write the activity in your notebook. Thanks for your attention. See you next time. Bye! Okay, let's start with the activities for this week. Vamos a empezar con las actividades de esta semana. Activity number one. On the activity number one, we have these different charts. Tenemos estos pequeños dibujitos, estas tablitas que nos ponen aquí que nos dice story elements. Tenemos los elementos de la historia. Y nos dice, number one, title. Tenemos que usar nuestra información sobre risitos de oro y los tres osos. Vamos a escribir el título, the title. Luego, characters. Who the story is about, los personajes, de, acerca de quién es la historia. En la florecita tenemos setting, where the story takes place. Ahí vamos a dibujar dónde sucedió la historia. En number four, plot. What happens in the story, beginning, middle and end. ¿Qué pasa en la historia al principio, al medio y al final? Ahí vamos a hacer 
tres dibujitos, lo podemos dividir, podemos hacer uno al del principio, uno del medio y uno del final de la historia, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, en esta, en esta actividad hay que hacer los dibujitos y escribir nuestro título sobre Risitos de Oro y los Tres Osos. Vamos con la actividad número 2. Activity number 2. On the activity number 2, we need to select the correct option depending on the adjective that they are asking for. Tenemos que elegir la opción correcta en cada preguntita acerca de los adjetivos. Recuerden que un adjetivo describe algo o a alguien. Un adjetivo que, que sea la respuesta correcta a cada pregunta. Tenemos ahí seis preguntitas y en cada una hay que elegir. Podemos subrayar, encerrar, tachar, como ustedes quieran, la opción correcta. Aquí nos dice, what color is his fur? ¿De qué color es su pelaje? Number two, what is his size? ¿Cuál es su tamaño? Number three, what is his complexion? ¿Cómo es su complexión? ¿De cómo es su cuerpo? Number four, what color is her hair? ¿De qué color es su cabello? ¿De ella? ¿De, de risitos de oro? Number five, what is her size? ¿De qué tamaño es? And number six, what is her complexion? ¿Cómo es el cuerpo? ¿Es delgadita? ¿Es gordita? ¿Es chaparrita? ¿Es alta? Ahí vamos a seleccionar, ¿de acuerdo? Activity number three. On the activity number three, we need to connect with the line the information written in the boxes. Aquí en actividad número tres, empezamos un, una, un pequeño paso a un tema nuevo que son los relative pronouns. Aquí vamos a conectar en Relative Pronoun, o sea, la preguntita, con su definición. Tenemos, por ejemplo, which, que es cuál, o sea, cuál prefieres, es usado para qué. Who, quién, usado para qué. Whose, usado para that, usado para... Recuerden que esto viene en el videíto, chicos, para que no se les pase. Aquí tenemos nuestras opciones. It is used for people. Se usa para personas. Number two. It is used for animals or things. Es usado para animales y cosas. Number three. It is used for people, animals, or things. Es usado para gente, animales, o cosas. Number four. It is used to describe a possession. Es usado para describir una posesión, o sea, un objeto que yo tengo, que yo poseo. Bueno, sigo con ustedes, chicos. Gracias. Bye.